All right, so the plan is the following. We are going to do Edwin of Code 2022. Oh, hi. Hello. Here. Yeah. So the plan is we're going to do Edwin of Code 2022 enclosure. Edwin of Code 2022 just for fun enclosure because why not? That's the plan. No time pressure. Uh, just some fun coding. And yeah, we'll see how far we get. Let me know if you like it. That's all I have to say until we get started with day one. As you can see, I'm on Advent of Code 2022. Absolutely nothing has been solved. I think this reveals a picture, if I remember correctly, from the last year. I haven't done it in a while. Um, and here we have just a very tiny little example project. Um, so we have a depths Eden that just specifies source and test as extra depths for a developer alias. And uh, we have just an example test uh, that calls an example function, create greeting with a name. Uh, and that one just adds the name to the welcome string. Uh, nothing really exciting. That was just for me to get uh, Calver with Visual Studio working and like have the test running and, and all of that stuff. So I think we're going to start by reading what day one is all about. <clears throat> day one calorie counting. Santa's reindeer typically eat regular reindeer food, but they need a lot of magical energy to deliver presents on Christmas. For that, their favorite snack is a special type of star fruit that only grows deep in the jungle. Jungle? Okay. <clears throat> the elves have brought you on the annual expedition to the grove where the fruit grows. Okay, gotcha. Not on the North Pole. To supply enough magic energy, the expedition needs to retrieve a minimum of 50 stars by December 25th. Well, we're kind of like nearly a year behind, but whatever. Although the elves assure you that the grove has plenty of fruit, you decide to grab any fruit you see along the way, just in case. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the event. Okay, <clears throat> that's more like how it works when you actually do it day by day. The jungle must be too overgrown and difficult to navigate in vehicles or access from the air. The elves, 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 yes. expedition traditionally goes on foot. As your boats approach land, the elves begin taking inventory of their supplies. One important consideration is food, in particular the number of calories each elf is carrying. Your puzzle input. The elves take turns writing down the number of calories contained by the various meals, snacks, rations, etc. that they brought with them, one item per line. Each elf separates their own inventory from the previous elf's inventory, if any, by blank line. For example, suppose the elves finish writing their items calories and end up with the following list. 1000, 2000, 3000, blank line 4, blank line 5, 6, blank line 7, 8, 9, blank line that. The list represents the calories of the food carried by five elves. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Like it's this block, that block, that block, that block, back one, so five blocks. <clears throat> In case the elves get hungry and need extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. They would like to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the example above, this is 2400 carried by the fourth elf. Find the elf carrying the most calories. How many total calories is that elf carrying? All right. Um, get your puzzle input. So in case you haven't done Edwin of Code before, this is like quite normal how this works out. So they nearly always have an example, explain what it is about, uh, explain what we need to look at. You then need to insert your answer. And the thing is that you get your puzzle input. So 
when you actually do it day by day, there's like a leaderboard and who does it the fastest and all of those things. And to make sure this is like fair, um, the puzzle input is, I guess, randomized. I'm not sure, but like it's tied to your account, right? So you can't just steal someone else's answers and put it into here. Um, so the way I normally go about it is then by using the example here is kind of like my bigger test case um, and that probably like stays red for a little while until I like fill in the blanks, fill in like the smaller bits. Uh, normally then that one runs, that one goes green. I assume that my implementation is correct and then I use the input, uh, run it through the solution and then grab the answer from that and basically do with that. So, uh, I hope that way of thinking makes sense, but I guess we're gonna see <clears throat> what that looks like in just a second. So I hope the, the problem is clear. Or I, I hope I understand the problem clearly. So we need to read a file, read each line, split them by new lines, tally up the ones per block, and then check which one is the highest. <clears throat> so. If we do that, um, new folder day one, and then new file core.clg. I just like calling it core. Um, it always seems nice to me. Uh, and if we follow that example, we want a new folder here that is day one and then a new file here that is <clears throat> uh, core test.clj. And one thing I need to get used to again is to save my files. And then what I quite like to do is it's like a split right, isn't there? Yeah. So what I quite like to do is I like to have my tests on the left and my um, production code, I guess, and my implementation code on the right. So <clears throat> what I would probably do right now is I would first require uh, day one core is core and then closure test refer and then dev test is for now. Um, so dev test returns 2400 for example input let So, and this is going to be interesting now. So the first question I'm asking myself is, do I expect the input to be a string? I think so, right? I think so. Like I kind of think this needs to be this. Oh, it does not look nice at all. S does not look nice at all. And then we need like an is equal 2400 uh, core slash find elf with most. Uh, unsure, uh, slightly unsure. So the first thing that I don't really like is, well, let's talk about a few things. So I like to make explicit statements about what a test asserts. So I don't like using like should or any of those things. I just say this does that. So in that case returns 2400 for example input. Um, that is not very useful from a, like a documentation perspective because it doesn't tell you really what it is finding behaviorally. But in that case, I think it's like a very specific example based one. We expect this one to fail for quite a while, um, which I, I, I think is fine. And 
<clears throat> we are going to use more like behavioral terminology for like the smaller test cases that we're writing. Uh, I guess for, I really can't stand this, this. That is very annoying, isn't it? Um, one of two ways to go about, well, there are probably more ways to go about it. Leave it like that, but that's not nice. Um, <clears throat> find a way to create or like the input from like example data. So we could have like a, uh, <clears throat> create input function that we pass like a vector of vectors that for example would be like 1000, 2000, 3000, and then like 4000. And that one will then create this string for us. Uh, and that will be used to like build our test data. Um, <clears throat> so kind of like a test data builder, uh, which honestly might not too, be too bad, or we could just like dev the kind of like the string for now. So example, input, and uh, sorry about that. Input, and then like put the string up here, basically, uh, which kind of keeps it out of there. Can I do that? No, I can't do that. Great. Uh, rubbish. <clears throat> so, something along those lines. But yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I think I prefer something like this, to be honest. So, the problem with that is it is cold, right? So, we would probably have to like write tests for that or we just say well we just wing it and we hope it's fine um it's just not very nice is it uh, but it's probably very simple code so <clears throat> you know what we're gonna do that um we can even write a test for it so let's get rid of this and then <clears throat> like the way i would probably like go about this normally is keep it separate so i would have like a new file here that is called test data or like just data maybe, uh, well, because we're already in the test folder, .clj. Um, and then what we could do is we could do this like in line with each other. So what I mean by that is we can require closure.test refer dev test is. So if we say um, just very simple, uh, dev test create input uh, create input returns calories separated by new lines and then we say is equal 1000, 2000. Oh, actually, like this can be simple. One, two, and then we say two new lines, three, four, and what I'm going to pass it is I'm going to pass def n create. Uh, not the best name, probably, because data doesn't really mean anything. Empty string, <clears throat> create input, and then the input here would be one, two, three, four, right? So these are going to be kind of like our groups that are separated by new lines, and then these are going to be like, um, yeah, the overall list. It's going to become a single string. So 
If we try to run this, I assume it's not going to be very happy. So evaluate the current file and then run all the tests. Yeah, expected one, two, and then three, four. Uh, actually, so we could go like in smaller steps really to be like, ah, oh, what if I only pass one thing? What if I pass like nothing? What if I pass two things? But I'm pretty confident here that I can write um, that without too much of a hassle, I really hope. And then uh, we don't need to worry too much more about it. Uh, so the blocks themselves are basically like mapping over every every sub vector so map function sub list or like block data and then what we do is because that is self we can do a there is a great closure dot string function is string which is like string slash join. And uh, do we have documentation here? Yes. So the separator and the collection. So the separator that we're using here is the backslash n. And the collection is the block data. Oh, oh, ugly. And then the, the, the map here and then the data right this would be our blocks and then we kind of need to do the same thing again so if we so we now would have this is a list of strings so we could should just be able to do strings let's join on blocks as well um we can probably simplify this a little bit but let's see so send this no it doesn't like it no such namespace string, okay. So this, this, uh, let's just see. Maybe this just works. If not, we're gonna try to play around with the REPL a little bit more, I think. So run all tests. It was backslash in, oh, um, of course we need like a separator here. So the separator here is going to be backslash n, backslash n in between the blocks themselves, right? This did not reload. Do I need to do that myself? Probably. Cool. Uh, so that passed now. If you're wondering why it says three tests, is we have one test here, we have one test here, and then we have another test in the like example test that I loaded earlier. So we can kind of like ignore it for now. Or we just kill the ripple and start fresh. That's probably a good option. So I'm just quickly gonna do that. <clears throat> okay, so all fresh. Uh, what I would do then is I would do day one data is data, and then here we can now change this to data slash create input for, and that gets interesting one that. Uh, We have another block 4000. Then we have another block that is 5000, 6000. Then we have another one that is 789. And then we have another block that is 10,000. So then we get rid of this. So, um, another thing that you might have been wondering is <clears throat> why I ignore the fact that it's going to come from a file. So over here, we're going to download a file, get a puzzle input. There will be a file that you download and then kind of like use there. Um, I 
don't really want to deal with like file IO in my tests very much. So I'm kind of like using the next reasonable, uh, I guess attraction is the wrong word, but like, I don't want to give it like a file and then have to worry about like reading that file and writing that file in my test and setting all of that up. Right. So what the file contains is text that looks like that. Um, so there's probably going to be like maybe an end to end test or something like that. But I normally don't start with that. Like if I have a relatively clear understanding of how I get from my file to like my input data, then I kind of like worry about it from that level. Really? I hope that makes sense. And then here we need to def n uh, find most calories. And that's going to have an input. Uh, and that's like, what is the input really? Is it like a calories by elves list? Something like that? Maybe. Yeah, something like that, I think. Um, and we can just return nil for now. Oops, excuse me. <clears throat> so let's try this again. Google find most. What's the problem? They want cool. They want cool. But it thinks it's fine. Am I misreading this? Okay, one second. Let's try if this runs. I'm not sure if I'm misreading this or not. Run all tests. Ran one test, finished all passing. No. One eternity later. I thought the like load file it says and it requires and dependencies. But I had to reload this manually. So maybe now if we run all tests. Problems found. Actual nil. Well, that makes way more sense. Okay. That is way better. Um, so one thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this example here. So I'm going to get rid of that now. Boop. Uh, we got everything running. Everything is good. Move to trash. Yes, off we go. Okay, so <clears throat> so now I want to actually get a little bit more into my behavior. So I think what I'm going to start with is I'm going to say returns. Uh, well, that's the question. Should it return zero or should it return like an exception if there's like an empty input? Um, because it's the most calories zero, is the most calories like doesn't exist when it's like um, I'm unsure. Let's just go probably with like returns nil uh, when uh, I guess we should talk in the like <clears throat> language of the domain here, right? So when no elves carry calories and that would mean in that case that we have let input I guess we can probably do that in line so and see if it's not too unreadable so is nil question mark when core slash find most calories for create input um, empty one so do I have to load this now or does it actually going to run them all? That's what I have to figure out. Two tests finished. All right. So it's happy with this one, uh, which makes sense because it should return nil. Let's see if we can quickly break it. I do like breaking a test that immediately passes just to check for my own sanity. <clears throat> See? Why? Okay, now three problems. Now it is complaining, actual, not nil. 
bit. So uh, I'm, I'm still slightly unsure if I just need to like load. So run this. Is it breaking now? Run on test. Okay, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Please be patient with me. All right. So that is fine at least. And I'm thinking of like just having a single elf and it should like return that number. Um, so returns single uh, uh, returns calories from single elf carrying one food item. Oh, what was the terminology, right? Because like a single elf can carry more items. Foods, one food, carrying one food. Sounds a bit weird, but I mean. So, data create input. So we have one elf and they carry one item of food. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna see if we basically get that number back. So equals, um, no, sorry, is equals one slash find most calories for input. So if we run all tests, it doesn't like it. Run four tests, two failures. Expected one, actual no. That's lovely. I think. I don't know why it doesn't make it red. Is it because of my cursor on it? Hmm. I'm sure. Okay, but we know that one fails. The other one, that one keeps failing until we're done, basically. So I wouldn't worry about that one. Okay. <clears throat> so, first things first. I guess, yeah, no. That's good. So what we want to do is we need to... kind of need to parse our uh, our input <clears throat> so parse calories what else um, def n So we want to return a vector of some sort. So what I would normally do is I would probably normally now heavily rely on the repr for this stuff. So parse uh, a string of one um, and execute that. And it's like nil, of course. Uh, so the first thing I guess we need to do is like, uh, uh, there is a, is it split that I'm thinking of? I think I'm thinking of split closure dot string is string and I think that one has like a, a strings list split lines even so what are you why no such names we are, because I have an input, sorry. So, okay, that's that. That's that. And I think it's gonna give us like a nil if we do this. So one, two, empty string, three, okay. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna take that and then split it again by empty strings, right? So this becomes a vector and then the next one becomes a vector. So I feel like there is a cooler function for that.
So I think I just had a different idea, which is we could maybe split the string first. So there is a split and that one you can say like closure is awesome, split it on like a space and it's going to give you back a list of that. So I wonder if we do split me, well basically this bit, right? Split me this on a backslash n backslash n. What, what do you think of this? String, ah, it needs to have a regex, so it needs to be a pound sign in front. So this is now giving one to that. And now if we map over this, and split it again. I think this is this is a nicer way to go. So if we do uh, blocks uh, doing exactly this, and then say we're gonna split the calories by elves into the respective blocks, and then. Split that again. What we also need to do is we need to turn them into numbers, which is always a little bit ugly. Um, so blocks are like this, and then we can do a. I guess if we do like a map uh, function block. And then what we do is we do a, we need to do another map. And that one is again really horrible. So fn uh, raw number. And what we need to do is we need to use integer slash parse int of raw number. And it's going to be over all of that garbage. I'm kind of getting lost here with all of the things that I want to do at the same time. Uh, this isn't good. This isn't good. I have to like. Let's go back a step too much at the same time. So, uh, split block, I like mm, sub split. Not quite sure what to name this, to be honest. Map uh, over closure slash, uh, sorry, string slash split lines or blocks. If we sub split here, so unhappy about something let let by requires an even number of forms one two three ah uh, I don't know how to so I need to get better with my par edit here and this goes here string split lines we can get rid of this then all right, and just do that and do this and then try that again. So yeah, so now we have a list of lists, but they are still strings in there. So what we probably want to do is we probably want to do the split line and the mapping at the same time. So if we do this, uh, we could make this its own function for simplicity. So block to like block maybe oh it's like a single elves calories maybe it's actually parse calories by elf singular this is calories by Elf. And what we do with that is we map <clears throat> fn line like raw uh, food and then integer slash parse int over food and then the input is. Uh, String slash split. 
display lines of Killer by Elves. So that means, hopefully, if we run this and we tried it out, power scalar is by elves, and we give it like uh, one backslash n two, we should get one and two. Cool, that is better. So now we do pars scalar is by elf. Evaluate this, run that, one, two, three. Okay, I like that. This is, I think, nicer. So what we can do here is we can kind of like thread. Can we thread it? It's annoying to thread because here it goes in the first position of the function and here and in the second one. So I don't think I'm gonna use a thread, I'm gonna use blocks. Or parsed blocks. And then parsed. Maybe slightly unsure on naming here, to be honest. Uh, maybe we can come up with something better later. But load file. Try this. No, that's not working again. Did I make a mistake? Oh, I'm not invoking powers. Sorry. Wrong number of arcs too, yeah, of course, because this is baked into the other thing. So one, two, three. All right. Uh, if we return first of calories by elves, evaluate, run all tests. Number format exception expected. So that one is interesting, right? Because it's grabbing the first sublist. That one expected one, but got like one one. That makes sense because it's a list of sublists. So we would really have to do that. Oops. No, uh, I know where I'm going wrong. So that's what I want. So now this one will pass, but we broke that one. Because what happens? I don't know if we want to deal with this because it's not really an input. So I think I don't want to deal with this. It's a bit of a cop out, I know. But I think um, I guess what we could do is we could do say if blank uh, blank calories by elf. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm realizing the wrong function. I want to do this here, really. Then we just return an empty vector. Control option by error. Well, that is taken up by another program. That needs to be a string slash blank. So, evaluate this, try to run the tests again. I uh, only found one problem now. Okay, so we fixed the problem around this nil here. Which means this is still not a good implementation, right? So now we can go back to what we're doing. So calories by elv is map apply plus percent of calories by elves. Mm. Then this would not be first first anymore. This would really be first of calories by elf. Uh, 
So I assume this is not going to say we have given it. Well, I just realized this is wrong. It's 20. This, this is horrible. Uh, this of course, needs to be. Excuse me, computer. This. Um, so, run all tests. It's not complaining because it's 6,000, which makes sense, right? We now sum them up, uh, but we're not picking the highest one yet. So what we actually want to do is we want to now um, order them, sort. The word calories has lost all meaning. It looks wrong, but I think it's correct. The only thing that I do not know is suet two four eight seven one. I think yeah. Um, so like a suet descending. Suet bigger. Huh. That's it. Suet dead run. Well, perfect. So simple enough, I guess. Thank you, closure. Like this, and then we pick the first one. Then we pick the first one of this one actually. Evaluate that, run all tests. Four tests finished, all are passing. Well, that's pretty nice. Uh, I would probably like normally have like another test here that like gives multiple ones because um, this to this test is quite like a big jump, really. Uh, so we can do that just for like um if we make changes in the future and we wanna don't want to worry too much about breaking existing things so returns carry from or returns calories from uh, what I want to say is elf carrying higher calorie calorie food so if we have one and two here then we expect this to be two right so evaluate run all tests and then we can have another one now that is copy returns calories from elf carrying higher or most calories most come uh, combined. I don't know if combined calories is really good thing. So we say if this is one and two, then this is now more than the last one. So we expect three to be returned. So evaluate this, run all tests. Okay, they're all passing. So, um, Right, but we still want to explain how everything works. Uh, this is now working as well. This is like our example. This is still wrong. Shame on you, Jacob. And there we go. Um, cool. So I think it is time to get our input file. Uh, and run it, really. So. All right. All right, so uh, just quickly uh, remind myself how, what the path looks like when we like slurp a file. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a dev main with nothing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let input be, well, this. 
Also, this is wrong. This must be def n if we want it to be a function. Uh, def n input, and then what we return is find most calories by input. So evaluate main call 70,720. Apparently, let's see if that is correct. All right, there we go. One gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. Well, I think it wasn't too bad. Um, we spent quite a lot of time on like the whole parsing stuff and what in my experience that goes a little bit faster then uh, because we now have the parsing code for the next ones because often they're like incrementally building on like a previous solution. Um, but yeah, I think it's not too bad for the amount of time that we spent on it, really. So I'm gonna call it here. Uh, and yeah, gonna continue with day two soon. Thank you very much.